Okay, our next speaker is uh, Professor Tok Sung Lee at uh, KIAS. Please welcome him. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Right, so uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to this nice workshop, Changbong, Jonghyo, and Antonio Celani. Uh, in this talk, uh, I'm Tok Sung Lee of KIAS here. And today, uh, I want to introduce a simple model for the coevolution of the cellular metabolism and also the phylogenetic tree of species. Uh, the motivation is that we wanted to explain the origin of some empirical features that we found uh, when you analyze the large scale data set of the cellular metabolism across uh, many species. So uh, before telling you uh, my research problem, I'd like to introduce first the uh, background. Uh, so this, is, uh, this shows you the uh, metabolic reactions. Uh, in our cell, we have many uh, thousands of chemical reactions that convert uh, chemical compounds. And this is, uh, when you collect all of them, uh, we see a very complicated map like this, a uh, map of bio biochemical pathways. And this can be also represented by a network like that. This is a bipartite network connecting uh, metabolic enzymes or reactions and uh, chemical compounds. So the left one is from E. coli and the right one from uh, humans. So uh, we see that uh, although the cellular metabolism is expected to be almost identical across species, but when you check out their differences, then uh, we see they are different from species to species. So uh, we wanted to understand the difference. So we downloaded the data from BioSeq database, and uh, we used this version, and the numbers are so it covers about over 5,000 species and over 10,000 reactions. And our, uh, the starting point of all of our research is this uh, species reaction matrix. Uh, it, it is a matrix element uh, of one or a zero. That means that uh, whether a reaction R is present or absent in a species S. And uh, the main quantity we are interested in is these two. So the first one, uh, both are obtained by summing the elements in a row or in a column. So R to the S represents, Rs is the number of reactions in species S. And uh, S sub R indicates the number of species containing that specific reaction R in their metabolism. So, the number of reactions in a species, they are quite similar. So its distribution is almost Gaussian distribution. On the average, uh, 1,500 reactions are found in the metabolism. And the standard deviation is large, but anyway, the distribution takes a normal distribution. But the problem is the, uh, not problem, but the one interesting thing is that uh, when you check out the distribution of SR, that means the, how many species has that specific reaction R. Then it takes a power law. And when you fit the data to a power law, then you find that the exponent is 1.00. So that slope is too, to be exact, I mean, to believe. So it's a power law with the exponent 1. So uh, those things were identified in the analysis of the empirical data. So our question is this one. Why is such a clear power observed in the metabolic network? So we checked out the metabolism across species, and it takes a power law. So uh, we expect some principle to be underlying uh, that power law. But I don't know, uh, would, you, would you think this finding interesting? So 
uh, one possible answer to this question would be that uh, this distribution simply reflects uh, different biochemical importance of different reactions and uh, for life on Earth. And the importance of different reactions happen to be distributed in that way. So this power law just reflects quite different degree of importance of biochemical reactions and no surprise, right? But uh, of course, I don't think so. <laughs> so I th uh, we thought that uh, this distribution comes from some specific way of the uh, metabolism evolution over a long time scale on Earth, right? So uh, yeah, so we, if we think about evolution of the metabolism, then this answer too could be the case, but we need to be more quantitative in digging into this idea. So that's the uh, main theme of this uh, work. So uh, we need to check out the previous studies about the, about the model for the metabolism evolution. There are many models as far as we can check, and these two are the most famous one. So in the left one, the main idea is that our, the goal of the metabolism is to produce A material. And then uh, if it is available in the environment, then everybody is happy. But if it is, uh, there is no more A, then we need to produce inside the cell from B. And suppose that uh, B, uh, we are run out of B then we need to produce B to make A, then we use the available resource C to produce B and then A, and so on. So chemical reactions are added uh, one by one. It's a backward uh, evolution. In this model, uh, in the primitive time, a uh, long time ago, one enzyme catalyzes every, all the reactions. So it uh, has a broad specificity. And then as time goes on, it takes so long time to catalyze every reaction. So by mutation and duplication, uh, the, there are many enzymes that are acting on selected reactions. So uh, along this idea, if we draw the metabolic network, then metabolic network changes in this way. Uh, given that the structure of the metabolic network is characterized by a broad degree distributions. People were interested in proposing the metabolism evolution model that can reproduce the broad degree distribution, power degree distribution. And this is uh, based on that idea. In the right uh, study, the people uh, introduced the organism degree. This is exactly equal to the number of species having a given reaction, R, S sub R, in our study. So they found that they, uh, organism degree is distribu distributed broadly, but they didn't plot it in logarithmic scales. And then uh, they proposed a network growth model where they consider uh, one metabolic network and it is expanding by recruiting a reaction one by one from a large pool of uh, reactions. So they, they were able to reproduce many properties, including the fact that uh, the, at the center of the metabolic network, you find more likely the reactions having large organism degree. So uh, the way they define the center is based on the network properties like the between centrality and so on. Also, uh, Maslow and Snappen and the statistical physicist was interested in explaining specific scaling between the number of transcription factors and the genome size. There is a quadratic scaling. So they introduced a similar model. Ah, uh, this was published before uh, the previous one. So they proposed a toolbox model. It's also uh, similar. So taking reaction from the pool and metabolic network is expanding. <clears throat> and then uh, the main idea is that they add a sequence of metabolic reactions and they assume that this uh, pathway segment is catalyzed by, uh, is activated by the same 
transcriptional factors. So they were able to explain this quadratic scaling. And also Borenstein and uh, their colleagues was interested in explaining human microbiome. So their idea, um, uh, main difference is that they consider the interaction between uh, multiple species metabolism, right? To explain the human microbiome. Right, so this is a brief introduction about the previous studies. And so, let me tell you first our model result. So our main, the main difference of our model is that we consider both network expansion and also speciation. So we consider both the growth of network, network and growth of the species tree. Uh, this is the uh, animation. So circles are species and in every species uh, the metabolic network is included and new species are born and network is also expanding. So this is one uh, run of our model, right? Uh, before telling you the details of our model, I would like to advertise that uh, this model exp explains a lot of empirical features. So here, uh, yellow, yellow circles are from the simulation of our model, and blue triangles are empirical data. So you see their agreement. This one is the Gaussian distribution of the number of reactions in a species. This is the, uh, the problematic distribution, the power law distribution of reaction uh, popularity. Uh, and uh, here, this popularity, I forgot to mention this one, the popularity F of a reaction is simply equal to the number of species containing the reaction R divided by the total number of species. So F is ranging between zero and one. Also, uh, the, the lower two panels were generated to test, demonstrate the predictive power of our model. So it reproduces well the power law degree distribution for compounds in the metabolic network. And the last one is the uh, characteristics of the species tree generated in our model. So we measure the distance between species based on how similar uh, the two species are regarding their uh, least set of metabolic reactions. So we use the Jacquard index. Uh, I'll explain it later. All right. So uh, among this, we will focus on this feature. And our original motivation is to understand and explain why this power law distribution emerges. Uh, so, uh, why such a power law emerges can be understood by considering a much simpler model than presented in the previous slides. So, please think about this uh, toy model. So, initially, uh, circles are species and squares are reaction. Suppose, imagine that there is just one species having one reaction, and then Next time, this species obtains another reaction, number two. Also at the same time, new species born, it inherits the reaction number one from A. So A is a parent of B, but simultaneously, species B obtains a new reaction, three, right? This is repeated. So at time equal two, a obtains another reaction four, but, and give birth to another new species C. C has reaction one, two, and additionally has reaction five, and so on. So uh, these yellow colored reactions are the newly recruited reaction at a given time, right? And then uh, this is the situation at time equal three. So you see that reaction number one is found in all the species. On the other hand, a number two reactions are found in four species. Number three is found in four species. And 
reaction number A is only in species A. Right? So this can explain the origin of the power law distribution. So uh, we can compute everything. Number of species is doubled and number of reactions is doubled as P and RT can be obtained exactly. And also we can compute how many species will have a given reaction R. So it is given by exponential function with tau R the burst time of the reaction. So uh, the earlier a reaction is born, then S R will be larger for the reaction. Right? And popularity is sim obtained by simply dividing it by the total number of species. So popularity of a reaction decays exponentially with its birth time or first recruitment time. So here, reaction uh, number two was uh, recruited at time one. So if we look at the situation at uh, ta tau equals three, then the time interval is two. So two to the minus two. That is one fourth is the popularity of the reaction. So popularity distribution can be computed in this way. So F, this is the definition of the popularity distribution. We check out every reaction, whether it has the popularity F, and then we change variable to burst time tau, right? And then this is Jacobian. And we know that how many reactions are born at given time. So R, t, R tau plus one minus R tau gives you the how many reactions are born at given time. And it is the uh, two to the tau in this server model. And this Jacobian, Tau, uh, tau decreases with uh, tau. Uh, so the derivative of tau with respect to f. So uh, this uh, uh, this increases with two to the tau. So the burst time distribution behaves as f to the minus one, and this Jacobian also behaves as f to the minus one. So this product gives us the f to the minus two. It uh, explains why we see the power law distribution. Right? This summarizes the result. But uh, this model is set satisfactory but has a problem. So the exponent is two, not one, so sadly. And also, uh, every reaction is recruited just once. Uh, of course, it is inherited, but uh, for instance, the reaction number four is recruited at this time by species A, and then it is no more recruited by any species at any other time. And also in this model, speciation and metabolism expansion. Here metabolism is considered as the set of reactions. Each expansion uh, occurs simultaneously. So their time scales are set to be equal. And uh, if we consider the network structure of metabolism, then uh, the recruiting or reaction will be more selective. Uh, it should be able to be maintaining non-zero flux when it is added to the metabolic network. So it should be considered. So uh, we want to address these points further. So uh, this is an improved model. Uh, in previous slides, I showed the result of running this model. So we consider universal pool of reactions. And here, uh, RSA is the uh, standalone reaction set. Uh, they can be activated uh, standalone. They can be activated even if they are inserted into the metabolism alone because it, uh, it it uses the substrates that are externally available. So uh, this summarizes the main steps of the model. So this is the algorithm. So uh, initially, the starting is at the beginning is the same as the toy model. So one species having one reaction exists. Then at every time step, every species undergoes one of three transitions expansion, 
rest means doing nothing or spaciation. So expansion or rest or spaciation is divided depending on the uh, reaction selected for uh, insertion. So every time, every species selects one recruitable reaction from the universal pool and then examine whether the species already has a similar reaction to the candidate reaction. So the meaning of the similarity, the similar reactions are the reactions sharing substrate or product. So if there is a, suppose that there is no similar reaction in the current metabolic network of the considered species, then the new reaction, new candidate reaction is just added to the metabolism. Suppose that that reaction, new reaction has a similar reaction already in the metabolism, then rest or spaciation happens. With probability mu, so this is the only parameter of this model, then R nu replaces the similar reaction and then new species is born. So uh, please see this one. So this is the parent species and new reaction is this one. So this new reaction replaces this one. The parent species is still there, but new species is born, and comparing these two metabolic networks, this one is replaced by this one, and this one was dropped because it cannot be activated anymore, right? So mu controls the speciation rate. So we repeat these steps until we obtain over 5,000 species, the same value as the empirical data, the same number of species. So I showed you the result of, in the previous slide. This is a snapshot, another snapshot uh, of the simulation of this model. All right, so how many minutes do I have? Eight minutes, all right. So, uh, from now on, uh, what I want to do is to do the similar calculation as I did in the toy model. So I compute the number of species and number of reactions as a function of time to derive how the uh, populated distribution behaves uh, as the popularity. So in this model, there is one uh, parameter, speciation rate, and Depending on this parameter, uh, results are changing. But uh, please look at this line. So we know that mean number of reactions per species is empirically 1,500. And we ran our model for these four values of mu. And among these four values, mu equals 0.02 is, gives the most similar numbers of reactions per species, uh, 1,100, 11, right? At, uh, mu equals 0.02, right? So I present uh, uh, the result with the uh, uh, with this value of mu uh, in the slides that I show you from now on, right? Uh, one remarkable feature of this model is that, yeah, uh, it shows a crossover behavior in the popularity distribution. So uh, in the, when mu is equal to 0.02, that crossover is not so clear. But when you use a larger value of mu, with this value of mu, uh, the metabolism size is smaller than the empirical one. Then you see that two regions are seen, so slow decay and fast decay of this popularity distribution. And that exponent, this region, the exponent is 0.7 or 0.8, and the fast decaying region, the exponent is 1.5 or 1.9. So I want to say that uh, to me, it looks that uh, the larger exponent is close to two of the toy model, the, the wrong exponent. And 0.7 or 8 is close to the empirical value. And when we uh, plot the simulation with the empirical data together, then this uh, slow decay looks similar to the empirical one. So uh, my point is that there is a crossover behavior. And let me denote this crossover scale of the popularity f star. 
and f star also depends on uh, parameter mu. And with such a small value of mu as 0.02, then that crossover is not so clearly seen. So the agreement with the empirical data is better. So the first one is the, uh, the number of species as a function of time. It was 2 to the t, ta, 2 to the t in the toy model, and it's similar. So uh, we can write down the equation uh, for the number of species, and mu is the speciation rate and alpha. In our model, new species appears only when the candidate reaction has a similar counterpart reaction existing uh, in the current metabolic network. So alpha is a probability that the candidate reaction has a similar reaction already in a species. And it, if it is constant, then we can expect that S grows uh, exponentially, right? And this is the result. So it really grows exponentially and the exponent is measured 6.31. Here, we introduce the normalized time. So t tilde runs from 0 to 1, dividing by the, uh, the total simulation time, right? And we uh, divided the time scale uh, from the uh, crossover popularity value. So f star was 0.4 with a uh, mu equal to 0.02, it corresponds to t tilde 0.4, right? And this, such an exponential growth was observed for different value of mu. So next is the number of reactions. And this is the equation for the evolution of the number of reactions. It also expected to grow exponentially, but there is a, a constraint. So one minus alpha is the probability to be expanding and one half mu alpha is the probability of speciation. Uh, either of the two happens, then new reaction will be recruited. But RT counts the uh, number of distinct reactions. So newly recruited reaction may not be brand new. So beta indicate the new candidate reaction is really new, brand new. Then our measurement says that this beta decays exponentially in the late time regime. So if we plot as a function of the number of species, it decays as to the minus one. That means that this part is almost constant, then number of reactions will grow linearly with time. Right? So uh, I hope you to remember that this burst time distribution is the one of the two key uh, factors determining the popularity distribution. It is related to the number of reactions like this one. And as I wrote down in the previous slide, it is given by this factor times beta and S. And our expectation is that beta is almost constant in the initial time, early time, and later time, uh, beta decays S to the minus one. So it is almost constant. So this distribution will be almost constant in the uh, later time regime. And this is the, uh, uh, the the most important difference from the toy model. In the toy model, uh, this uh, burst time distribution grows exponentially, but in this model, it is expected to be saturated in the late time regime. And this is our simulation result for different values of mu. And the behavior at the late time regime is not so clear. So it decays or constant or decays and so on. But uh, in the early time regime, it grows exponentially, and that's the important part, okay? So uh, we can divide the blue one, early time regime, and red one, late time regime. So uh, the saturation, the reason for the saturation of the first recruit time, uh, burst time distribution is that uh, we are, have a finite number of reactions, and as time goes on, uh, if you recruit a reaction, then it is very likely to be already recruited by other species. So if we draw the, uh, the if we plot, uh, locate the uh, ever recruited reactions in the universal reaction network, then there will appear the giant component of the recruited reaction. So this is the 
shows the size of the giant component in the universal pool network. So the remaining, and also uh, we can compute the, uh, the popularity of a reaction, R, and then uh, in the toy model, it decays exponentially, and then it's the same also uh, happening in our model, so it decays exponentially, but it decays faster in the late time region. So, uh, using that burst time distribution and the popularity of a reaction as a function of burst time, we can compute the popularity distribution. Uh, we can divide the early time regime and late time regime. The difference is the late time regime, uh, the burst time distribution is almost constant. So if you remember this formula, then P tau is almost constant in the late time regime. So it cannot give the F to the minus one contribution. That's why we observe uh, in the early time regime, we see PF is given by F to the minus two and late time regime, we have PF is given by F to the minus one, right? So uh, this summarizes again, uh, what's the difference between early time regime and late time regime. And we also measured uh, these two quantities, the derivative and uh, burst time distribution, and we found that, as theory predicts, this Jacobian gives uh, f to the minus one. The exponent is 0.7, it's close to one, and this exponent essentially determines this uh, slope, uh, 0.76 uh, and so on. So the exponent of the popularity distribution is essentially determined by this Jacobian thing. Right. And then finally, uh, when he, uh, we got the referee comments about this work, and then they said that the, uh, uh, they wanted to, us to demonstrate the predictive power of this model. So uh, we checked out the properties of the species tree generated by our model, and we, found, uh, we measured the distance between species based on the, the dissimilarity of their uh, set of reactions. So we define the distance as the one minus Jacquard index of their set of reactions and its di distribution sensitively dependent on the parameter mu. And uh, luckily, <laughs> we found that with uh, mu, when mu is quite small as the point of two, then uh, this black one is the empirical one and the yellow one is from simulation. So this distribution overlaps with the empirical data. So it, uh, it is a plus of our model. Right, so uh, in this world, we wanted to understand the origin of the popularity distribution, taking a power law, and we found that burst time of a reaction essentially determines its popularity and its distribution and pop Dependence of popularity on the burst time essentially determine the uh, statistics of popularity with that we observed in empirical data analysis. All right, yeah, thank you very much for your attention. Any questions? Can you tell what the rate of new reactions being recruited is? I mean, this. Uh, right, so uh, mu is the rate of giving birth to new species. So uh, mu equals 0.02 means that uh, when you expand your network 50 times, and then you have a chance to give birth to a new species. So, yeah, it's the rate of passation. Any other questions? Uh, if not, uh, let's stop here and uh, let's thank uh, Professor Lee. All right.